my beautiful wife and me on our wedding day, but that's not the picture that I need to come up. Uh, um, just give me a second. Uh, this. Uh, <laughs> Just be patient, uh, trying to, oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, 56-year-old Cheryl Kroll of Barrysburg hit a farm combine in her lane and then crossed over the center lane and hit a truck head-on. Kroll died at the scene. The driver of the pickup is still in critical condition in the hospital. His 11-year-old son is here in Buffalo at Children's Hunt. So that was December 4th. 2014 and you know I've done some of these testimonies in the last couple months and I didn't cry at all but the first testimony I ever did I cried like a baby because when you have a se severe traumatic brain injury that's I guess part of it it makes you more more emotional but uh, because of the accident I had uh, let's see uh, several fractures in my face apparently now I don't remember any of it um, the state police told me uh, that the lady hit I'm, I'm going on my way I'm on my way to my beautiful daughter's uh, third grade Christmas chorus concert and I have my son with me in the passenger seat and uh, we're heading uh, to Attica school and uh, Apparently, a big John Deere combine was headed in my direction, and so was the lady. And uh, I don't remember any of it. And I guess the lady hit the rear axle of the combine so hard that she died immediately, unfortunately. But her Chevy Equinox went airborne into my lane and went through my windshield and uh, I guess hit me in the face and the, my body and uh, I ended up with several fractures in my face, uh, three or four in my orbital area, um, my nasal passage, um, I had four cr broken ribs, a crushed left hand, a fractured skull and uh, like I said a severe traumatic brain injury and uh, I wish I had another hand to hold this <laughs> Well, I do have another hand. It's just it doesn't work. I'm completely paralyzed on my left side. But thank God, um, my hip works. Uh, when I came out of my coma, I was completely paralyzed on my left side. And uh, you don't make deals with God, but uh, I guess I tried to. I told God that... Uh, I'm okay with being paralyzed if through my accident he could bring just one person who wasn't going to go to heaven uh, through my testimony, through my story, if, if he could just bring one person to believe and, and be filled with the Holy Spirit and go to heaven, uh, it was worth it. It was worth it to me. This does this by itself too. It drives me nuts. But um, so if there's anybody under 42 years old, when I was your age, I didn't believe in God. And uh, I'll tell you why. It's, I mean, my parents, I had the best parents in the world. They took me to church every Sunday growing up. I mean, I went to confirmation, got baptized, the whole thing. But you know what? I'm a very realistic person. And when I talk to people at grocery stores, I mean, I'm constantly telling my testimony to people because I think, well, I've learned from Dr. Charles Stanley that God has a will, a plan, and a purpose for all of us. And I really believe that he saved my life so that I could tell it like it is. And, and this is what happened to me. And when, uh, when I came out of my coma, I felt the presence of God 
And uh, as soon as that happened, I was like, okay, Lord, I surrender my life to you. And uh, my life's been so much better. And uh, let me uh, show you a couple more pictures here. You know, I get off track every once in a while. I'm so sorry. But uh, I, I'm uh, going to show you some things. I mean, God hates pride, and I'm not being prideful, but you don't know me. So in order to make my next statement more effective, I think I need to show you some of these, um, these pictures here. Um, I was a very athletic person. I mean, very athletic. And uh, I just love sports. I love sports. And I, is there any PETA members in here? <laughs> because the other thing that I loved was hunting. So, <laughs> well, I don't want to, I guess, I want to be very uh, respectful to people. And uh, if there were people who didn't want to see what I'm going to show, I wouldn't show it. I would just talk about it. But anyway, um, I was MVP in uh, football. I was MVP in basketball. And I was MVP in baseball at my high school. And uh, in 1990, I was the, uh, I guess, best athlete at the school at the time or something. I don't know what that last one's for. It doesn't matter. My point to you is um, I'm not bragging but I'm telling you that I would rather be a paralyzed guy who can't basically do any of that stuff anymore but have a relationship with Jesus in my heart than the guy that everybody thought was so good that I pretty much, I was very, very, uh, I guess, um, what's the word, uh, competitive. And I would find a way to win. I mean, you ask some of the, gym teachers or my buddies, I would find a way to win. And uh, now I realize that Philippians 4.13, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now I realize that it was all God blessed me with these abilities. And uh, I'm just so thankful. Um, not only did he bless me with being athletic, but there's my beautiful family. And uh, my son was 11 years old at the time of the accident. And he's my best friend. And uh, he's such a good kid. And uh, now he's, Jake, how old are you going to be, 17? He's 17 now? <laughs> so, well, blame it on my brain injury. I don't know. So so anyway, um, he uh, he's a starting quarterback at the Attica Varsity football team. I'm so proud of him. And uh, when you see the truck that we were in, I mean, it, he's a miracle just like I'm a miracle. And I'm so thankful to God. I'm so, so darn thankful because, um, I mean, I didn't deserve any of this. Um, he was in that side, passenger side, and I was underneath the corner of the combine, I guess. And the guy who cut me out of the truck, I had a party for the Bennington Volunteer Firemen. And uh, the guy who cut me out of the truck taps me on the shoulder and he says, uh, I forget his name, I wish I remembered it, but he said, uh, let's say Joe. I'm Joe, and I'm the guy who cut you out of the truck. And he said, I've been doing this for 23 years. And he says, if this isn't one of the worst accidents, he goes, it's one of the top three worst accidents I've ever seen. He goes, there was like, he goes, I have no idea how either one of you lived. He, he said, uh, your son had maybe a foot area, a foot cubic area where he could have had his head. He said, and you, he said, it, the camp, it, it was just crushed. He goes, I have no idea. And then here's another crazy thing. There's a lady when I was at one of Jake's football games, and I wish I knew her name too because I would love to talk to her more. But I'm watching at the, at the fence, and she taps me on the shoulder, and she said, uh, 
let's say it's Sue. My name's Sue, and uh, I was one of the first people at your accident, one of the first ones. I was headed home or something, and she said, I'm a uh, retired nurse at the Attica Correction Facility. And she said, when I got to your truck, she goes, I was the first one. She said, you know what I saw? I said, no, I don't know what you saw. And she said, I saw an angel on your on your dashboard. And, you know, before I knew all this stuff was real, I'd be like, well, this lady's out of her mind. But, I mean, the bottom line is, I now know that God is real. That's the bottom line. See, uh, the, my problem was, I mean, I was taught, like I said, my parents, my wife, uh, they wanted me to go to church. And I went to church basically every Sunday. The Sunday routine was go to church and then do whatever afterwards. But I went to church almost every Sunday unless it was hunting season because I'm a very avid hunter. But now, since my accident, I haven't missed a, a Sunday service at all. Because you know what? Uh, and I can't remember which, uh, I guess, uh, commandment this is. But you're not supposed to have any other gods before him. And to me, I guess, anything you do other than go to church to honor and give glory to God and thanks is more, you're, you're, you're validating that that's more important than God to me now that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Everything is different for me now. And uh, my problem was in Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. But I'm a figure-it-out kind of person. Like, I try to figure it all out. And if you try to figure out the Bible... It's just not going to happen. At least it wasn't for me. I mean, when my parents or the or the church school teachers said, Jesus turned water into wine, walked on the water. Um, there's a million different things. Um, raised Lazarus from the dead. Healed a poor, poor blind beggar, Bartimaeus. Uh, gave him his eyesight back. I mean, I could go on and on. But that's enough to know that if you're realistic-minded and you're trying to figure it out, lean on your own understanding, and there's a lot of people like this because when I talk to them, like I'm talking to you, I see them not in their heads just like this. They're like, yep, I'm just like you were. And then I think to myself, you know what? My job now, God's will, and I, I learned from Dr. Stanley that God has a will, a plan, and a purpose for all of us. And I really believe that his plan and purpose for me, because I tell a condensed version of this testimony to people, basically, I would think at least every day. If I go to Walmart, it's just something happens where they're like, oh, I like your cross, or um, did this happen? Did you, were you born like this? Were you in the military? I mean, tons of things. Or they see, I mean, they might they might see my... Uh, my license plate was, uh, well, let me see here, what the heck. It's tough with one hand, everybody, but I'll figure it out. Um, here's my license plate, ROM828, and I'll bet you you guys know what that means. Romans 828, um, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. And like, here's the deal. Because I had a lot of friends, I was very, I guess, well known because my parents were teachers at the school, both of them. And through sports, you get to know a lot of people. And uh, I was in the paper several times, uh, Batavia Daily Sports section. And I'll get to that a little later for something. And, uh, but anyway, what was I going? I, see, I kind of get lose, lose track of my thoughts. Um, so, where, what, what was I talking about, anybody? 
Oh, yeah. Romans 8, 28. Thank you. So here's the deal. Um, my, all my friends, I had some friends come to... See, I was at ECMC for a couple of months in the traumatic care unit, critical care. And then I, I got flown to Denver, not Denver, but uh, Englewood, Colorado, to Craig Hospital, one of the best uh, traumatic brain injury hospitals in the country. And then I got flown to Siesta Key, Florida, to a uh, one of the best brain injury rehab hospitals for a couple of months. So the whole thing was about, I don't know, six to eight months before I got brought back home. Thank God, because the brain doctors, they, uh, they described it like this, my brain injury. Well, this is kind of interesting too. They put my, I remember the brain doctors, they put my CAT scan of my brain up on the, the big white wall and they projected it up there. And this is after I was starting to do a little better because my, my left side was completely paralyzed. But then I had so many people praying for me. I mean, thousands. My wife and her friend put a, a Facebook page, prayers for Jason Dressel and I had so many people praying for me, it was not even funny. And you know what? Um, I'm going to stop right there, be, not completely, <laughs> um, but I'm going to stop there to say that the, there's so much power in prayer, and there's so many people that need prayer. I mean, you should be praying constantly. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, um, and here's another verse that Romans 8, 29, and this happened to me. Now, I didn't ask for this to happen to me. See, I was, I think, a good person, but there's things I wish I could go back and change. But this whole transformation of Romans 8, 29, for those God forsaken, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So I think that's what's happening to me. And that's from what Dr. Stanley says, that's his goal for all his children. He wants to turn you into being more like Jesus. And, and that's uh, his goal. And uh, I guess um, I got to keep an eye on the clock because I can't go too long or... And it's so funny because the brain doctors, they're like, uh, if you uh, take an egg, a raw egg, and you go to throw it really fast, but you stop, you might not crush the shell, but the yolk keeps traveling. And they said, look at all the black streaks in your braid. He's like... Uh, we have no idea how you are doing what you're doing because I was talking. I had a memory. I thank God so much because all that was taken from me was my physical and big deal. I mean, who cares? I mean, for 42 years, I was uh, at the top of being a physical and athletic. Now for the next 42, I'm going to be at the bottom. So I tell my kids as a joke, if you average the two out, I'm just a normal guy. <laughs> so anyway, um, where was I again? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. He's listening. <laughs> so the brain, when you throw the egg, but you stop, the, uh, the yolk keeps traveling. So it, it's kind of like what happened to my brain. When the equinox hit me in the face, my head hit the headrest, and it's my head stopped quickly, but my brain ricocheted it off my skull, the inside of my skull. So basically, they called it shearing. They said, your, your brain sheared. I'm like, well, what's sheared? And now I realize what it is, because shears, like if you get a pair of shears, they cut, and basically, my brain cut off the inside of my skull. And they told me that the 
left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. The right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. So because the right side of my brain is tore up pretty bad, the left side of my body. But they, didn't, they really didn't think that I'd have much of a memory, uh, be able to feed myself. They told my wife and my parents, take the next few days, this was before I came out, I guess, take the next few days to go find a nursing facility to take care of him because the cat scan of his brain medically shows that um, he probably won't be able to talk, feed himself. Uh, I know I just said that, but uh, uh, be able to move. I mean, tons of stuff. Have a memory. And uh, isn't it unbelievable that the things that really kept me from being a believer was being realistic, like, God, uh, come on, did God really uh, heal people? Did he, I guess, uh, cast demons out? Did he fix all these people? And I wasn't going to believe it. But then he ends up doing it to me. I mean, that's, that's craziness. And I'm just so thankful. I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be doing, standing here, <laughs> doing uh, testimonies at churches or uh, to people all day long. If something, I wouldn't be telling everybody how great God is if, well, the main thing is my son. If something would have happened to my son, like the, uh, I guess, fireman can't believe that he's even alive. And it's like, God will only give you as much as you can take. And he knows that if something would have happened to my son, I wouldn't be sitting here telling you how great God is. Probably be the opposite, to be honest with you. So I really believe that that's why he saved Jake. And uh, I've learned from Dr. Stanley that he has a will, a plan, and a purpose for everybody, like I said. And this is his purpose for me, I guess. And you know what? Big deal. So I can't play basketball and be like I used to be. Who cares? Maybe someday I'll be back into tip-top shape up in heaven, which I guess everything in heaven is, or everything in the Bible is true, I've, I've learned. And it's just so, I guess, see, I didn't ask for this to happen to me. I didn't ask really to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But you know what? It's real. And until, until you get filled with the Holy Spirit and realize what I'm talking about, you must be thinking that I'm crazy. Because I used to be on the fence, and I tell people who are on the fence, you know what? It's my job to plant the seed. It's up to, to God to make it grow. And uh, I tell them, you know, the first testimony I ever did, I said, you know, I, I don't want you to have to go through what I went through, the big accident, all this stuff being paralyzed. I want you to do it the easy way, do it through faith. But then on the way home, I thought to myself, you know what? That's not the easy, you know, for some people, it wasn't the easy way for me. I mean, my parents did their job. Uh, and I think there's a verse in the Bible, something like, uh, bring your children up in the way they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from it. So it's very important for parents to teach their children about God and, and Christianity. And uh, I didn't know that I was going to have to go through this to, to get it, but I'm so glad I did. I mean, that accident and everything was the best day of my life. And I mean, who on earth would have thought that this was a, but that's the whole thing. Romans 8, 28. God works all things together for good. And my friends and everybody think, how is this good for you? And then I have to explain to them. And I think that they kind of get it. Like, I, I could see my friends kind of getting like, wow, he's, he's really, 
I'm getting sign language from my mom back there. What is it, mom? Oh, I guess I got to wrap it up. See, here's the thing. Um, the doctors didn't think that I would live or let alone uh, speak. And now I tell people I talk too much. <laughs> but I guess, oh, oh, yeah, I forgot. My mom has some stuff to say, too. I'm, I'm sorry, mom. Yeah, this is, a, this is some important stuff right here. I know you probably all have plans for the 4th of July. This is my mom, Carol Dressel. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I will share one thing, you know, when he was in confirmation class, he was in bed, and I, I still went in and prayed with him some nights. And uh, he says to me, Mom, how do you know that God is real? And I said, Jason, it's faith. I feel it in my heart. I know it in my heart. And I said, you have to ask the Holy Spirit to, you have to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Well, he told me a few nights later, he said, he said, uh, that night I was laying in bed and my light was off. And he, he said, well, God, if you're really real, flick those lights three times for me. Nothing. Okay, God, if you're real, flick them twice. Nothing. I remember this. All right, God, if, if you're real, just once. I'll believe it just once and nothing. Um, I remember in college writing him a letter, a note, which I did. And I said, Jason, if you didn't make it through the night to the next new day, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Because as a mother, I had a real big concern about that. What I'm going to share you right now, with you now is if somebody had said this to me, I'd be shaking my head and say, oh, yeah, really? But when it happens to you, it's a whole different ballgame. Jason was in the ICU of ECMC for um, 20 days. On Christmas Eve, they moved him from the IC unit to the traumatic care unit. He was still on all kinds of bags, and he was still s sleeping most of the time. Um, he, if he did open his eyes, he didn't focus on you, and he only put maybe two or three words together at a time. I don't know how long it was after he got to the traumatic care uh, injury floor, but it was maybe a week, and we, my husband and I would come every single morning and spend the whole day. We lived about an hour away in Pembroke, but my daughter lived only about 10 miles away. So we actually moved into her house with, of seven, seven people, five kids, and lived there for the next month. It was 179 days that he was in hospitals or facilities. Um, anyway, this one day morning we got there, and his drawer was closed to his room. And that was very unusual. It was always open. And the nurse came over and said, Jason had a very bad night. And I went in, and he's kind of moaning and, and, and actually ranting and, and raving. And I noticed on his tray there was a Coke can, and it was all disshaped, almost as if it had been frozen. You know, if you get one and it frozen, it gets out of shape. And the nurse said he threw that at some at something during the night and so we we stayed there usually we're down to Tim Hortons or something taking little breaks we never left him because it was the most heart-wrenching thing that a mother could go through he just he he would flip his body we were afraid he was going to flip right out of the bed and and it's against the they can't restrain them we said restrain him you know rope him in uh, but they can't do that so anyway he would do this ranting and raving and, and flipping his body, uh, and then he'd quiet down for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then right back to it again. And uh, by 11.30, the nurses were getting concerned because his blood pressure was going up so high. So they said, we're going to call the doctor and see if we can get a sedative for him. That was at about 10.30, it took, a, or 11.30. It took until 12.30 for the orders to get through and for them to bring in the sedative. They gave it to him and they said, now you can go and get some lunch or, you know, we hadn't even gone to the bathroom or anything. And he say, they said, he'll be out for a long time. Well, at 12.30, it was 1 o'clock before he fell asleep. And by 1.30, he was awake again and doing the exact same 
scary, very scary thing. When he moaned and groaned and, and jabbered, it was just jabberish. But we understood some words. God, Satan, help me. And those words kept being repeated all through this episode. By 12, 1.30, he was awake again and doing all this. At about 2.30, we felt, I felt, a wave of peace flow through the room. It came from the right, and it flowed through the room. Peace. About 15 minutes later, he opened his eyes, and for the first time, he focused on us. He looked at us. I could tell that Jason was in there. And a guy who had not said more than two or three words in over a month looked at me and said, God and Satan fought over me, and God won. And a few seconds later, he said, God said, don't be afraid. I have a plan for your life. And even six years later, I get emotional over that. And, you know, it still was a long, long road. I won't say that anything was perfect or easy after that, but that was definitely the beginning Oh, Jason. That's okay. We're good. We, uh, Jason, I want you to uh, I want you to show them uh, a little bit about your hunting prowess as okay. well, because that's that's <laughs> really really cool. All right. Okay. Um, well, just a little uh, note to what my mom just said. Um, so back to the crushed uh, coke can. Um, and before I get to that, um, remember what I said, I felt the presence of God go through my body. Um, it was, pr I don't see, I'm a very realistic person. I don't want to be wrong about anything. But uh, I'm assuming that it was probably in that uh, episode and and uh, through that, the Coke can thing was, and I remember it till this day, I was laying in my bed, and in the corner of my room, kitty corner, there was this figure, and people believe it was the enemy, uh, the bad guy, the evil one, and... Uh, I could see him play his day, and I would call the nurses in, or they would come in, and I'd be like, "Get rid of that person." They're like, "There's no, honey. There's no person there. there there's nobody over there." So then, finally, sometime throughout the day, see, my right side's always been good. It's my left side that was paralyzed. So <laughs> I took that coke can and I chucked it at him. And uh, that's how the coke can got all deaded up. But but here's the thing. Um, and this is, you talk about divine intervention. Um, this is really incredible. Um, so I'm eventually down in Florida during Easter the next year. And uh, my parents were able, I was good enough, I guess, to go out of my uh, re, uh, facility and go to their house in Florida for an Easter dinner. And uh, I'll backtrack a tiny bit. In the Prayers for Jason Dressel Facebook, my wife would read me over the phone all these comments that people were making about how they were praying for me, how they wished me the best. And I felt like Boy, I really want to 
I don't know how to do Facebook at the time. I was like, I really want to thank them. I really want to personally thank them. So I said, Hardy, could you just comment back to the people about how, or just post a, whatever it's called, po- put a, what is it? Well, whatever, I, I, I forget. Uh, anyway, um, I said, please put my cell phone, because I had my cell phone. I said, please put my cell phone number in there and tell anybody who wants to call me, I would like to, to thank them for, for praying for me. And uh, my mom had told me that story that she just told you about God said that he had a, a plan and a purpose for me, for my life. And we're eating. We just got done eating. And lo and behold, I get a phone call. And uh, I have no idea who it is. And I answer the phone. And this girl on the other side line says to me, Jason, uh, you don't know me, but I've been following on Facebook with what's been happening to you. She said, my name is Shelly, and I'm from Oakfield, and I graduated about the same time as you, and I'm into sports, and I've been following you through the paper, and I know who you, who you are from, the, from your sports stuff. And she said... Uh, She must be a Christian, too, because she said to me, do you know why you survived? And I'm like, oh, not really. And she said, because God's not finished with you yet. He's got a plan and a purpose for your life. (laughs) Sorry, but I mean, can you believe that my mom just told me that I said that, and I didn't know I said that. She just told me that, and that some girl that I don't even know randomly calls me and tells me the same thing. You tell me how God works in mysterious ways and how he's just um, omniscient, I think it is, but in charge of everything. And just like me being here now, I mean... I see Ron, never met him before in my life, at the laundry mat in Corfu, and here I am today. I mean, God just, uh, he's God, and he just, it's very strange. Uh, like, I tell my buddies or people that, you know how, like, to try to explain to them how God works. I mean, I don't know any, everything. I mean, heck, I don't know hardly anything, but I did do learn a lot from Charles Stanley, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, which is real, which I used to think was kind of weird, when I went to church and everything, I thought it was kind of crazy. Holy Ghost, what are you talking about? But now I understand it. And uh, when I was uh, talking to my buddies every once in a while, or even anybody, you know how there's that Star Wars uh, movie series, and the the person is what, uh, the guy who... Uh, writes it is uh come on you guys know yeah george lucas is the creator of star wars and what happens in star wars one can affect what happens in star wars three which can affect what happens in star wars five and the only person who knows that is george lucas and i relate that like a correlation god knows everything, past, present, and future. And what happens at the laundry mat turns into coming here, which could help somebody somewhere else. And it's just unbelievable how God works. He's like the George Lucas of the world, (laughs) or times a billion. And that kind of, I guess gives people who are on the fence like I used to be, it kind of lets them understand a little bit. But uh, there's one more thing I wanted to say, well, probably a couple things, but 
my, my buddies that came to ECMC, I remember them visiting me, some of my teammates, and they said, uh, Jay, you're going to beat this. You know, you, uh, if there's anybody that can do this, is that if there's anybody that can beat this, it's going to be you. You, you win at everything. And uh, not to sound like a jerk, but that's what they said, that you could beat this. And I said, uh, you know what? Now, now that after this happened to me and I had God fill me, uh, fill me with the Holy Spirit, now when I see him, I say, you know what, you guys, look up Philippians 4.13. And uh, I show them this because maybe they will, maybe they won't look at it. And uh, give me a second here. There it is. And that's all the glory to God. I mean, I'm just a, a lucky guy who got blessed. And I, I was blessed even before my accident, and I didn't even know it. I mean, God has been so good to me. And I mean, between the sports and uh, my family and my parents, my whole family, um, and... Uh, I wasn't going to, oh, where is it? Uh, here, this is another way. God's blessed me. Um, that is my hunting room in the basement. Um, I've been very, very successful at hunting. That's the Grand Slam of turkeys. But anyway, um, here's here's the thing. I, I get the rapid upside. Um Here's the thing. I was gonna. I got interrupted. Now I can't remember what I was gonna say. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Listen to this. This is how awesome God is. Like I said, God knows past, present, and future. So He knew that I was gonna need to have this happen to me in order to, I guess, believe it. Up. And uh, He has uh, made me. There's three characteristics that I have that I had before my accident that I believe God gave to me in order to enjoy life, in order to be success, in order to do what I'm doing right now physically. And uh, one of them was I was always a very hard worker. And uh, in order to do what I do, I have to be a hard worker. And another thing is, I have to, I was, I always loved a challenge. I mean, hunting is a huge challenge. And, uh, let me see quick here. Uh, here you go. Here, here is a picture of me with my last turkey that I'll ever be able to get with a compound bow. I, I, I hunted most things with a bow because it's more challenging. I love the challenge. But now I can't because my left side is paralyzed. And I do miss that a ton. But you know what? What I've lost, what I have gained through this accident versus what I've lost, it outweighs it so much that I could care less about that. And uh, um, so that's the two things, two characteristics. Love to challenge, very hardworking. And uh, the third one was... I don't know what my buddies will say about this, but I was always a pretty tough guy. And uh, in order for me to have to continue, I work like crazy, uh, getting my food plots ready. I drive my tractor. I do everything. I I fall once in a while, and it's one time I fell, and I fr broke, fractured my shoulder and tore my uh, labrum. I mean, I'm getting hurt all the time, but you know what? I just think about, there's a lot more people worse off than me. So it's like, I'm not going to complain because look at what God's given me. And he saved my son. That's huge. So anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, here's the thing. Um, for Because I guarantee I was one of the guys, my parents would have brought me to something like this. And uh, I wasn't a believer I went to church, but I wasn't a real believer. I'm what you call, I was a make-believer. And 
There's lots of people like that out there. And I just, there's a verse of the Bible. I don't want people to have to go through what I went through, like I said. But there's a verse of the Bible, James 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So my advice to people is, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, which when you are, you know you are. I mean, it's like night and day between how I was and how I am now. So I just recommend drawing near to God. And what's an easy, I thought, about, I thought of this myself, what's an easy way to do that? Quick and simple. And I put a, uh, my job's to plant the seed now, and it's up to God to make it grow. And I, I thought, well, if I give people at the end of my testimony, if I have a, a bowl of seeds out there, um, my advice is take a clear piece of scotch tape and tape that seed to your refrigerator handle. And then every time you open up your refrigerator door, let's say you get up in the morning and you're going to have some cereal, you need some milk. Open up your refrigerator door and uh, do two things. Could take three seconds each. Thank God for something and pray for somebody. So in other words... Open up the door to get the milk. Dear God, thank you for this rain that we got last week that we really needed. And uh, please be with Pastor David uh, on his return trip. Uh, Keep him safe. So what did that take, five seconds? Okay, now I got to put the milk back. So I have to open up the refrigerator door. I open it up. Dear God, thank you for my beautiful family and... uh, Please be with this country. We need you in the worst way. Done. So God will be seeing that you're trying. And all he wants, I believe, is for you to try. And if you draw near to God and he draws near to you, maybe he will, like, I'm no, I didn't go to seminary school. I'm no pastor. I'm just a guy that this happened to who has learned so much from Dr. Charles Stanley, which And Sarah Young is another person I would recommend. But while I'm on that subject, trust me, I'm only going to be two more minutes. Um, I'm just a guy who this happened to. And here is a book that, here's another thing that could take only a couple of minutes a day. Read this. It's a daily devotional. I highly recommend it. And another thing is, this is a free app on your phone, In Touch by Dr. Charles Stanley, and there's a daily devotional, and I listen to it every night when I go to bed. You just, uh, you just, it, it, he talks right to you. You don't even have to do anything. You just lay there. And so if you're trying, I really believe that God will fill you with his Holy Spirit, and uh, you'll get there a lot easier than I had to. And you know what? I don't care. I'm, like I said, that was the best day of my life. And I'm happy that it happened because what I have is just the best. So people, see, here's the thing. People who are believers, I my testimony just strengthens their faith. But people who may be on the fence like I used to be, I want to plant the seed and have God make it grow. So enjoy the rest of your